Okay, now we can start. Uh, sorry for the delay. And uh, so uh, last time uh, uh, we can try to talk, talk about uh, this uh, 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 this uh, this operator algebra and the uh, and this uh, uh, so called the categorical symmetry. And uh, so remember that the categorical symmetry basically include the, the selection rule, but also include the actual feature like the anomaly, the braiding statistics. So it's a, it's a symmetry, it's an ordinary symmetry coming from the conservation law plus additional feature. And we patch them together from some kind of braided diffusion category, which fully describe the symmetry. And there's another way to look at the symmetry. That is the symmetry selects a set of local operator. Is algebra local operator also encode information of symmetry? And here we want to emphasize that uh, uh, this local operator algebra not only encode the selection rule, also include, include those additional feature like anomaly, the braiding, those things. So therefore, we should be able to use in uh, operator algebra of those uh, uh, local symmetries uh, to, uh, to compute the braid diffusion category. It means to compute all the feature of the symmetry. Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so the, the important thing is the following: that uh, uh, the 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 operator, the algebra of the local operators, not only contain local operators, also contain extended operator. And then, from extended operator, we can consider a subset of that we call the transparent patch operator. Uh, which which kind of commute with uh, this local operator in a bulk, and so therefore this transparent patch operator basically have an invisible bulk, but the boundary is non-trivial. So this is a way for us to discover, rediscover the super selection sector, uh, because of this uh, local operator are all charge neutral because they they commute with all the symmetry. But however, when you consider the uh, transparent patch operator, the bulk is invisible and two boundaries is something and each boundary can be charged. The total charge equal to zero. So this kind of thing can happen automatically. So, so this is the, so, so by consider there's a set of a transparent patch operator is a way for us to discover non-trivial charge, non-zero charge, or maybe even fractionalization and which you appear as a boundary. And uh, so, uh, and then this, uh, then the algebra of those transparent patch operator would give us the, uh, uh, would, uh, would allow us to recover the symmetry and the actual feature. In other words, uh, recover this uh, so-called braided diffusion category. Okay. So let's, uh, uh, you know, uh, last time uh, we, we discussed some example uh, to give some feeling what is what those transparent patch operator looks like. So, like in one plus one dimension, and uh, we can have a patch symmetry operator, which we do symmetry over a segment. And we also have this empty bulk operator, which only carry symmetry charge on the boundary. So Z create a charge. So we have create a pair of Z2 charge, so total neutral. In three plus one D. Uh, we have similar thing. We have a string operator where two end of a string is two Z operator. And we also have the ball operator where the symmetry transformation act on the whole region. Okay. And, uh, but we have additional uh, 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 pa tra uh, transparent patch operator which have empty bulk. So those are really a two dimensional uh, uh, patch operator. But however, the operator only live on the boundary, boundary of a disk, only live on the boundary. The bulk is empty. But because the boundary is one dimensional, so we have option to put the so-called symmetry breaking state on the boundary. So this particular transparent patch operator creates something non-trivial on the boundary, 
but something non-trivial happened to be the symmetry breaking state. Similarly, we have a same thing with the, with the ball operator, which is bulk is empty, but the boundary again create a two-dimensional symmetry breaking state. And you can even have a ball operator with an empty bulk, but at the boundary create a Z2 SP state or create this tabular order state. So, so, so actually those transparent hard temperature in a high dimension became very rich. So presumably if you, if you do, do the calculation right, you will you can recover the lower dimensional topology order I speak order just from this point of view. Okay. And uh, yeah, you may say that uh, why you include those? It seems not important for the symmetry. Uh, I include this really because of falling. You know, I imagine this kind of a, uh, this operator algebra would lead to the Bray diffusion category in higher dimension. But the Bray diffusion category in higher dimension contains those kind of things. Because of the Bray diffusion category in higher dimension is supposed to describe all the excitations. Like in three dimensional space, there's a Bray diffusion higher category should describe a membrane station, string station, and a point like excitation. But the string excitation and the membrane station could be topological order state. Okay, membrane station could be a topological order state, can be a quantum Hall state or live on a membrane. And the string station, if you have a symmetry, then can be can be SP state or symmetry breaking states. So those things are there in the mathematical formulation of a category theory. So therefore, uh, it's nice to see that a similar structure also exists in the operator algebra. So that's what I try to say. Maybe it's a, this, this, this makes it reasonable to say that uh, this operator algebra and the higher category indeed have a correspondence. But at the moment, we only know a little bit of this. So we don't have a full mathematical understanding how, how things go, go around. But uh, at least uh, at the beginning, uh, we have some qualitative picture. Yeah. So are, are these other trans transparent structures, are they defined on all lattices? Or are they, are they only defined on lattices where there's Still, uh, charging capacity. Yeah, those are pretty fine on, on all the lattice. And, uh, but I don't know what, 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 what that's your question. And uh, in general, when you have a symmetry, uh, the, the, the patch operator as a whole always is symmetry neutral. They, they, they are invariant and the symmetry. So this is uh, encoded in, in this condition. That is a two patch operator always commute. If the patch, if the boundary patch are far away, they, they may have an overlap in the bulk. If, but as long as the boundary is far away, they commute. And also as long as the boundary is not linked. If boundary is linked, it could have different results. If the boundary is far away and not linked, then uh, they should commute. So, so and one of the transparent patch operators generate the symmetry. Then every other small patch operator with a covered by this uh, symmetry op operator to the commute, so it means they are no, all neutral. Yeah, so um, can you go to the slide four, please? Yeah. So it seems to me like if the number of uh, like, um, sites in like boundary of disk is odd, then there's like an odd number of the D, so then it'll be not a charge neutral operator. So I wonder if it's a lattice dependent thing. Oh, yeah, 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 totally right, yeah. But there's a sum. This is symmetrization. Oh, so see. if you expand, you have even the other terms. So all term all cancel. I see. Okay, thank you. I didn't know. Yeah. That. So, uh, and this is actually so very, very important. So this sum encoded this uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking is somehow hidden there. So this uh, what is uh, this uh, H, uh, H uh, G H Z some kind of entanglement something. So it's a, it's a encoded here. So everything else is a product state, but there's a overall there's a sum. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, uh, so so here I'll, I'll give another example of a transparent patch operator. And these two examples are for the Z2 symmetry. So let's consider a non-abiding uh, example. I remember in the, the non-abiding case, uh, we, we did uh, uh, this uh, non-abiding duality. So we have a original we have a model where we have a degree freedom live on the on, on the site, which are labeled by the group element. 
Then there's a dual model with a group uh, derivatively on the link, also given by group element. But the relation between two models is that uh, the, there's a side group element, uh, the G, G inverse gave rise G, I, J. And that's how the other degree freedom two model get a map. Okay. And uh, so therefore, when the degree freedom live on the link, this kind of like a gauge theory. So naturally, uh, we have we can using this uh, using this theory, we can define a. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, we can define this a uh, transparent uh, 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 a transparent patch operator. So first, we want to say that the symmetry here. Uh, so in d-dimensional space, uh, uh, we have this uh, d minus one symmetry. We call dual symmetry of this uh, group-like symmetry, and this is not group-like, and beyond is a uh, beyond group. Okay, and uh, so so this symmetry is generated by the so-called Wilson loop because the degree freedom live on the link is kind of like a gauge theory. So we can using this link variable and, and their representation, RQ is a representation, and to define the operator. So this is the operator act on this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, many body states. Okay. And, uh, and for every loop, for every loop uh, over the lattice, we can define such a, uh, we can define such a, uh, this Wilson loop operator and that generate. So this, this is symmetry. So this symmetry, this is, a, this is a dual symmetry G D minus one is generated by this uh, Wilson loop operator for arbitrary closed loop. That's the definition of a symmetry. Then we can have this uh, 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 local operator. And the, the, the local operator uh, for this uh, uh, symmetry actually is a, uh, uh, did I write anything? Uh, or yeah, here. So uh, this is not quite accurate. Local operator after the function of a GIJ. So any function of GIJ will be a local operator allowed by this symmetry because uh, this same trans transformation only depends on GIJ. So the community is GIJ. This a T tilt H operator is like a gate transformation operator. And uh, when they act on this, uh, this, uh, this basis uh, on, the, on the I site, then the link connect to I uh, those variables get modified. If the first, uh, if a first index of link connect to I, we get this H transformation. If a second index of the link connect to I side, we get H minus one transformation. So this basically like a, we, like we do a gate transformation on this uh, site, and all the link variable change accordingly. Okay, and then this operator also commute with this uh, Wilson loop operator. So therefore the local operator are generated by this function of GIJ and also this uh, uh, gate transformation on every site. So that is, uh, uh, so that is uh, 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 the local operator. So now we have a challenge. So, so now let's uh, forget about the transformation and just from this set of local operator, can we obtain this patch operator? Can we obtain the transparent patch operator? Then from this, from their algebra, try to rediscover this symmetry. Yeah, so that is that is a challenge. And actually, for now uh, uh, this for this for this now building uh, symmetry, uh, yeah, we, we couldn't carry through this program. But but we can see some signs seems things it seems works, but uh, exactly uh, how things work. Completely, we don't know yet. So this is still some, uh, some open issue. So let's uh, try to get some uh, idea what's going on. So first of all, the, 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 this, uh, this higher symmetry is generated by this loop operator. Then to have a transparent patch operator, which is very simple, we just consider open string rather than a loop, an open string. So now we have the Wilson law operator just uh, work on an open string. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so this is a uh, uh, this is Wilson one operator. We have some trouble to obtain this uh, 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 the other the, the other operator, which is a uh, 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 which is supposed to act on the ball. Yeah, and the the dual the dual dual operator should act on the ball. Okay. 
So, so let's say well, why we have trouble. So let's consider we have a product of uh, th, it has a product of th. That seems very natural because this operator is supposed to correspond to this, uh, in the original model, supposed to correspond to the symmetry transformation. And uh, that is uh, uh, the symmetry transformation is given by this. Uh, uh, let me see, did, did I write it down? Yeah, so it's actually, I, I changed the name, it's WH. So, so symmetry transformation is a, basically is a, uh, is a, is a, the operator which acts on every uh, G, okay. And the patch operator will be act on the ball. Inside the ball, we have a transformation, outside the ball, we don't have transformation. So after, after non-abelian duality transformation, this operator should give us the other uh, trans transparent patch operator. So it's a it's a very natural to guess that it's a, uh, uh, the other operator just a product of this uh, this gate transformation. So basically, we do a uniform gate transformation inside the ball, then do not do it in other place. But this one have a problem, you know. This operator do not commute with a, with this a local symmetric operator. <laughs> This uh, this this supposed to be local symmetric operator commuting with this uh, uh this uh, this Wilson loop operator, and uh, the patch operator should commute with this. But however, this now as non abelian group, this uh, H and H prime do not commute. So if if we have a ball operator defined by T H prime, then for T H if H and prime H prime do not commute, this operator do not commute, so we have trouble. And the transformation is like uh, doing this uh, conjugation. So one way to fix this uh, conjugation is uh, to, to replace this uh, TH operator by, on each side by the summation of a conjugated class. Then multiply. So in different order, we, here is that uh, we multiply the sum. But uh, op one option is uh, to do the sum first and multiply later. Then on each side, you have a summation of a TH with H sum over conjugate class, then this operator will commute with this uh, TH operator for every H. Yeah, uh, th this will work. But, but uh, that one also don't work because that one, if you do this, this operator don't work with, uh, uh, with this operator because uh, uh, when, you, when you have this uh, non-uniform local gate transmission in a region, and when you have this Wilson operator embedded inside this region, the two underpoint Wilson line would, would see different gate transformation, different transformation, and then this trace won't cancel them. So, so Wilson line operator, when you're in, inside this ball, will, will not commute with the bulk of this uh, ball operator. Yeah, so actually we have a lot of trouble. And uh, so the, uh, what I really try to say that uh, uh, we have difficulty to obtain the other operator, basically. And out of a desperation, uh, <laughs> so we do another thing called the low energy sector. That's a weird low energy sector come in. You know, when the degree freedom leave on the link as a group element, when you multiply three group elements along a loop, you may get a non-trivial non -trivial element in the group. That's representing a non-trivial flux going through this loop. But however, in the duality transformation, uh, you know, the GIGA is, is come from the GI times GGA inverse. So this kind of GIGA always a pure gauge. And uh, the product around this uh, loop always equal to identity. So in the sense that uh, this, uh, this model, the dual model have too, much, too many degree freedoms including degree freedom where the flux is non-zero. But when you're mapping from this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this original model to the dual model, the, or, the degree freedom in the original model only give you configuration in the dual model with zero flux. Okay, so that's why last time when you talk about this duality, we have this term, U infinity. 
define low energy sector, low energy sector. It's a low energy sector of this uh, dual model correspond to the original model. And uh, so although the, the symmetry here, uh, uh, this kind of this kind of a D minus one symmetry can be defined without thinking about the low energy sector, but we have trouble to do other operator. So 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 to 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 introduce other operator properly seems we have to restrict to low energy sector by requiring that uh, uh, the, the the product of a group element and the link uh, when you go on the loop always equal to trivial. Okay. So in this case, when you, when you, in this low energy sector, then the degree freedom in this dual model would map exactly with degree freedom in the previous model, the original model. Then we can really do a, a then we can really do a, a do a duality mapping uh, to to map this uh, patch symmetry transformation where we do symmetry transformation on the patch of a uh, uh, large site. Map this a WG operator, a WH operator to uh, to this a WK operator. So let's you get on the K, you get on the summation. Basically, this is a this is the product of a TH, but here the point of H depends on site. H depends on site. And how the dependent side actually is this way. We have a we have a reference point I zero. And on that side we have I. We have we have H. The H I on other side are kind of transported from this H to this side. Because basically, you know, through each link, we go we do a gate transformation, and then the H go to this H go to this G. J I zero times H, that's another H. Then the by multiply a string of H, we kind of transport the group element here to group element here. That is a that's the value we choose. So this is a uh, so if you do the duality the mapping, this is what you get. And um, there's a little bit of mismatch uh, because you, you have reference point, there's something. So at the end, uh, we need to fit this mismatch, this global summation of H over this uh, uh, conjugate class. So, so this one works, yeah. So I, I don't want to really go through this, uh, uh, push this uh, to the end because we also don't know what's going on. And, uh, but I just uh, want to demonstrate there is some complexity involved uh, to, to define this uh, operator algebra for non abelian symmetry for this uh, a Wilson loop like symmetry. It's a it's a very uh, tricky. And uh, also, uh, maybe here the expert is also. I'm not sure whether this operator is a tensor product operator or not. This a oh no, tensor a tensor network operator. Yeah, it's whether it's tensor network operator or not. Because uh, this operator involving you know the operator at the site I. Involving string of a degree freedom far away from site I. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Yeah. So this uh, there, there's an issue here. Yeah. There's an issue here. So uh, 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 so this transparent patch operator will do something. Can we assume they are tensor network operator? Or we have to assume with something more general. Yeah. But at least uh, I feel that uh, for this example. Uh, we should have this kind of ball operator, <laughs> yeah. And this this kind of ball operator only can be defined well, community everything only for this low energy sector. The underlying sector things don't work very well. Again, we don't know why. Sometimes we hope we we can have something, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, but but at the moment this is a uh, what we have for a non abelian uh, group. So the point is that uh, uh, if you if you design uh, this operator algebra something like that. It's been nice to to apply your theory to a non abelian group, and that's already have a quite a non trivial feature. Uh, to work in that case, uh, it's uh, already uh, very non trivial. That 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 that's the point when I go through this. So any questions here? Yeah. Yeah. Just curious, using this procedure to find G tilde, do you have um, a way to relate what G tilde is in terms of the repetition? Original G symmetry. 
I, yeah, I, I it's a relation see. really this. You know, uh, first, uh, this uh, G tilt is, uh, is a higher symmetry, so it's generated by the, its transformation is, uh, is uh, for, the, for each loop, we have a transformation. Mm -hmm. However, this transformation operator are related to the group G in the sense that uh, this uh, matrix RQ is a representation of G. So that's how they connect to G. Okay, so would you say it's like a D minus one form uh, rest G fusion category symmetry then? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Yeah, and uh, but, but again, it's just a name, you know, <laughs> what sure, sure, <laughs> well, yeah. that name is. Now here I want to really say that uh, uh, the symmetry transformation is generated by, by this operator. And what so and then the patch symmetry operator is given by Wilson line. They're all very natural. For this ball operator, we try to define a symmetry uh, a charge charge object, the operator creating charge. And because uh, this is a uh, this is a higher symmetry and uh, the transformation is on the loop, so the charge object would have a code dimension one. So it would be like in, in 3D dimensional space, the charge object would, would be the membrane. And uh, then what is the, but the, what is the operator creating the charge object, which the bulk is kind of invisible and, uh, and the boundary creating charge object. And also total charge is neutral, but uh, each segment have a non-trivial charge. The, as total operator, the whole total charge equals zero. And for non abelian group, uh, this charge object operator have a, some tricky thing. It, it's a little tricky, you know, how to, how to really do that. Okay. Uh, since you already say that, at this stage, I can, I can, there are physical reasons why we need this, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this flat connection condition. Because uh, if, uh, if a GIJ do not have flat connection, that means, uh, that state, the charge is everywhere. The charge is everywhere. So when you create a charge somewhere, in the background of the charge is everywhere, <laughs> it's very hard to, to, to see what you get. And this condition, almost like uh, the condition, we have, the, we have no charge. Yeah. And then um, for, on those states, when you, create, when you apply this operator, then we only have a charge at the boundary. No other charge, yeah. So then this makes things. Uh, so that's the intuition I have, and also the to see why we have difficulty without this uh, flat connection. That's a uh, uh, so so this is a, a non abelian uh, uh, higher symmetry have this uh, uh, shuttle thing, and uh, certainly we we know what we want to get is uh, this uh, this bridge diffusion category is uh, this uh, again same thing as the G gate theory. And uh, we, we know what we should get because of the boundary of Wilson line actually is the uh, is a G gauge charge. And the boundary of this ball operator should be the gauge flux. And uh, so, uh, but, but uh, yeah, there's a, yeah, there, there's an issue how, uh, how, how this all works. Okay. But uh, so let's, let's try to, uh, 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 so, uh, ignore this issue uh, by by consider abelian states only. You know, for abelian states, uh, it's, we don't have this uh, problem. It's everything is can be computed. So let's uh, let's try to see the the, the try to see the uh, this how we get a bridge fusion category, but for using abelian symmetry only. And uh, so uh, so so as again we mentioned this the uh, last time is that uh, the uh, uh, for each, for each like a string operator, uh, for each string operator, the boundary is supposed to be onions, okay? But we have too many string operators and we don't have finite type of onions. And the way to get rid, uh, to, to, to make this connection is that uh, uh, we have equivalence relation among string operator. If a boundary differ by some kind of local symmetric operator, we say these two string operator is the same. It's equivalent, then we only have finite equivalent class of string operator and this equivalent class first of onion. So that's how we get this important data, the onion type, how many type of onion in this bridge fusion category. Okay. 
and which is basically how many type of string operator up to this uh, uh, equivalence by applying boundary symmetric uh, uh, local operator. Okay. And then we also, then we, then we design this uh, string operator very carefully. So, so their boundary is a particular operator so that uh, they can join very nicely. <laughs> so the string operator IJ times string operator JK, they became a string operator from I to K. So J can annihilate. And this is not automatic. You have to design boundary very carefully. So to require the string operator to have this algebra. Okay. And also when you multiply two string operators together on top of each other, okay. You may not get a third string operator. You may get a, a string operator with some, some of several string operator. And that gives you this uh, fusion rule. You know, when, when you put two, two onions together, you get a third onion, but may contain some, there are some onion, but there are some onion became superposition of the operator. So, so again, this is quite amazing. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, so therefore, from the string operator, we can recover how many type of onion are there? What their fusion coefficient, fusion rule are there? How, how onion fuse? Right, start the algebra of a string operator. And remember this fusion rule, basically is a conservation law of the onion and the conservation law of the symmetry. So therefore, uh, so like A is kind of like a number of group, group elements. So this type of how was a, or A is like representation and this, uh, NABC N tell you the conservation law for, for each representation. And other feature like uh, this E at I theta, E theta, theta AB, they are mutual statistics. That's actual feature of the symmetry. And we should be able to obtain those actual feature as well from those uh, string operator. So which is a, a, which is a, a, a transparent patch property in one dimension. So we, let's consider one dimension only to make things simple. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so maybe let, let, let me do this first. So there, so therefore this, uh, 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 we already discussed this part, the mutual statistics. And uh, that is uh, this, uh, 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 you know, when there's a, uh, when two transparent patch operator, when the straddles are like this, they may not commute. And, uh, so it's like a, so like a, this, this is zero, one, two, three is a model system. Then we, we apply A string operator first, then apply B string operator. So we kind of looking upwards. Then the here we apply B string operator first, the A string operator next. So that is a, that's a from operator point of view. Then we can have this, a, a, a space time picture of this operator. If you apply A string operator first, you know, A is like hopping, hopping from zero to two. The one onion is hop from zero to two. We treat the string operator as a hopping operator of onion. So then we have A hop go from zero side to side two. Then we apply B operator. So now B operator hop from side three to side one. So this is became space time interpretation of this operator product. And then we have different order. We have B operator apply first. So onion hop, B hop first, then A hop second. So now I can see something interesting. This, uh, this two order means uh, the two process where at the end, the one onion kind of braid another, braid around another, another onion. Yeah, so, it's, uh, so in the space time picture, it's like a one go on another, yeah. So this one, give us a mutual statistics. And the self statistic is a trick here. So actually this, uh, uh, this graph tell us, we can also use a hopping operator to obtain self statistics. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah, this is a, this is a, this a, a paper is kind of uh, how we call the hopping operator algebra or statistical algebra. And uh, the background for this is really the following. Usually like a boson fermion is something given. In, it's not a dynamical property, not like a tone interaction or short interaction. You can tune Hamiltonian to obtain different, different interaction, get different physics. 
both are fermion is given before you before everything. But actually, this picture may not be quite right, you know, uh, to understand the statistics. So, so therefore, we have this uh, uh, point of view that actually the boson of Fermi statistics is also dynamic property given by the Hamiltonian. If you modify Hamiltonian, then you have a, a modified, you have modi you modify statistics. So here, how we modify Hamiltonian, basically our Hamiltonian is given by these hopping operators. And we can choose two different sets of hopping operators have different algebra. The first set hopping operator gave you a Hamiltonian described boson. The second set of hopping operator gave you a Hamiltonian described by fermions. And you can start with the same Hilbert space, you know, same qubit system. You just have different set of a hopping operator and using some of the different hopping operator to construct the Hamiltonian, then you end up with a bosonic system or fermionic system. So really uh, we're taking uh, this point of view. So therefore, we try to say that uh, actually the boson of Fermi statistics should be encoded into the hopping operator of those particles. If you, if you know their hopping operator, then we know their statistics. Then here, the hopping operator basically is the open string operator. My Hamiltonian is some open string operator. If you choose different set of open string operator, you'll get a different set of statistics. So this became a game. Can you invent or uh, construct different super string, uh, uh, open string operator, describe a boson, fermion, or onion? One can play this kind of game and try to have emergent statistics. And it is in this background, we try to say that, you know, how to read the statistics from a hopping operator. Well, this is a way. So the idea is that well, again, if I have two identical particles, A, A, then we do this uh, hopping from three to one first, then from one to two second, then from zero to one third. So we apply three hopping operator in different order. And this, uh, so actually I have a green, blue, red. We have three operator, green, blue, red apply this hopping operator in different order. Then as a result of this, if you apply this green, blue, red in this order, this A hop to this, the first A, the A on side three hop to A on side two, and the padding on side zero go to side one. But however, if you do the other order, rather than green, blue, red, we do red, blue, green. We decide to exchange red and the green. Then we find that this, uh, this uh, A operator from side zero go to two and the uh, one from side three to go to one. So the result get exchanged, two kind of get exchanged. And uh, then they say that uh, the, if these two process, you can see this, this, uh, uh, these two process describe same space time trajectory. You know, the only the order are different. You can imagine you may have a magnetic field in space time. So all those hop operators have a complex space due to this AIGA, you know, due to that gauge potential. But in this arrangement, all this AIGA contribution is the same because the path is the same, just order is different. So somehow this is this is this, this is a trick to remove this uh, this complex hopping due to this background electric a magnetic field. Then not only the statistics evolve. So this uh, the phase factor, if this a different order gives rise to a different phase factor, then that will be the statistics. That's will we'll, we'll reveal the statistics. Yeah. And uh, uh, same thing here, again, uh, uh, these, two, these two different trajectories have kind of have same trajectory, just order is different. And uh, so, so all this uh, non-universal complex phase in the hopping operator cancel out. And uh, then the, and, uh, the actual phase factor uh, really became a statistics and the self of it. So this is, so this is, a, this is a way to get an actual feature from this uh, 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 operator algebra. Then actually there's another actual feature, which is uh, in physics, we don't talk about too much. Uh, that is uh, this. Uh, uh, that is uh, F symbol. Okay. So one way to obtain F symbol is a uh, is a uh, again consider this uh, ABC operator. But we 
apply them in different order. Yeah. So, so in, the, in the first case, uh, we kind of fuse A and B first, then fuse C later. Then we can fuse the B and the C first in the second pass and then fuse A later. And again, uh, all these paths, uh, the, just space time pass is the same, only the order are different. And uh, then we may have a, uh, some phase factor here. And that's called F symbol. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this one is a, uh, it's a very, very interesting, and it's there. But somehow physicists don't talk to them. And uh, so actually, that is the nature of a particle. You know, when you have a particle, we say there's a statistics, there's a mutual statistics. Actually, there's third nature, F symbol. But somehow F symbol is not generally discussed. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a like, a, yeah, we, we miss one third of a, particle statistics actually. And uh, uh, so, so it's a, yeah, it's a, it's kind of thing, uh, can we, uh, uh, what, what is physics? Can we measure it? Can we design? But actually there's a, the, the, there's the I've seen it by itself is not exactly physical. I mean, there's a gauge redundancy. So there's a, you only, you can only measure the gauge environment part, but I've seen it itself not gauge environment. So there's some issue here. Like I think it's like gauge potential. You can never measure gauge potential, but you can measure electric field at their curl. And uh, so when you do something, some, some curl of F symbol should be physical, should be measurable. But this data is independent. It's, I shouldn't even have, it's different from mutual statistics and self statistics. It's some additional data. And for single model, they may not be independent. For single model, Knowing mutual self statistics, you know everything. But uh, for some cases, uh, maybe they are, uh, in some complicated case, uh, they are not independent. And uh, so, again, this is an open issue. That is, uh, 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 one F symbol is, uh, is, uh, is give you extra information in addition to self and the mutual statistics, and how to experimentally really measure this kind of uh, actual statistics or something. Yeah, but I don't know, mathematics will tell you there's something like that, and uh, it may have a physical uh, consequence. Okay, so all this together, so we come to this. We have a, a just means a, a equivalent class of strings. We have a NIJ, NABC tell you this is a fusion uh, rule of a string, and F symbol, self statistics, and the mutual statistics, they all together is a bridge fusion category. Yeah, so this, that's it. That's a bridge diffusion category. And uh, this corresponds to two plus one dimension topology order. So this is really uh, the, 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 the way we compute uh, the bridge diffusion category uh, from the operator algebra. It's, uh, it's, it's not too, too hard, actually. It's, uh, it's really just a hopping operator, the algebra hopping operator would involving all those kind of things. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, so when we all see Hopkins operator, maybe you can try to see, uh, recover those kinds of uh, structure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, so that is a, uh, that kind of, of, of a general uh, uh, setup. Uh, this setup works well for abelian symmetry, and we don't know how it works for non abelian symmetry, so that's a means more work. And certainly there's a, there's a even more general symmetry than non-abelian symmetry and there's a fusion category symmetry, non-inverted symmetry, all this, you know, how things work, that, that's a, uh, again, yeah, kind of open, yeah. And here I want to again give some example of this setup. And, but in this example, we can emphasize on the emerging symmetry, this emerging symmetry. Okay, so uh, so so why we do this example is is the following thing. Remember when you do the icing model, we say icing model have a symmetry and a hidden symmetry, which is dual symmetry. And we have this very weird situation that in the icing model, the dual symmetry transformation has empty box means that they do not do anything. And only in the in a dual model of icing model, the dual symmetry have a non-trivial action, but the symmetry have a trivial action. So we don't have a single model where both symmetry 
has non-trivial transformation. And so that makes people wonder, maybe this symmetry deal symmetry seeing them together is a bad idea. We should not do that. And so here to try to counter that <laughs> uh, opinion, <laughs> then we, we want to uh, invent a model which have a two symmetry explicitly, both have non-trivial action. Then at the low energy, these two symmetry became a different symmetry. Uh, emerging symmetry is different. You know, uh, the, the high energy lattice symmetry is Z2 cross Z2, just ordinary Z2 cross Z2. But low energy emerging symmetry is a, it's a different symmetry described by different symbol. It's roughly contained two selection rule, two conservation law, but uh, the, the actual feature are different. So, so have this, uh, some different symmetry. So, so in this model, uh, basically we have this, uh, the model we have uh, the X live on the site, X tilt live on the link. So we have a spin on the site, spin on the link. So the two set of spin. And uh, so basically we put a model, do model together <laughs> by hand, you know. And then we add this energy penalty term, this U is a bit. And this, this term try to connect the model do model. And uh, so the idea of this energy penalty, energy penalty term is that uh, at the low energy, at the low energy, this uh, Z, Z tilde Z equal to one. Then in the low energy subspace, this model became of my original IC model or something like that. Yeah, because this try to say that uh, Z tilde is given by Z i and Z i plus one. <laughs> So, so therefore, Z two is the slave of Z i, Z i plus one. So, so that's our duality mapping. So, Z two on the link is given by the Z on the two sides. So here, we're using the half integer to label the link. So that is the idea. And uh, so then, let's see how how things work in the uh, from patch operator point of view. Certainly. If you think about the whole uh, original model, which I have two symmetry, uh, there's a spin flip in the on the side and some spin flip on the link. Then on the then at a, then there's an issue that is a, uh, okay yeah so so then then in this model. Uh, the, we have a zero dimensional T patch operator, basically that's just a local symmetry operator, which have a, you have X and a Z, Z, that's a com commute with this symmetry. And you have a Z tilt and X tilt, X tilt, commute with that symmetry. So that's our local operator. Then similarly, we have a, yes, they're familiar, we have a, they have an empty bulk charge operator and this a symmetry, patch symmetry transformation. And a similar thing for the, for the other one. Okay, so th those are uh, uh, familiar case. So this, this is a patch operator describing Z2 cross Z2 symmetry. Then we ask the following question. Suppose U is very big. And then we want to restrict ourselves in the low energy subspace. How picture changes? The one thing is that because we want to restrict ourselves to low energy subspace, those operators are illegal because those operators create uh, uh, high energy excitations. So we should only choose operator which act within low energy subspace. Means we should only choose operator which commute with this, uh, this uh, triple Z operator. Okay. So, uh, so then it turns out that this, uh, if, you, if you work it out, uh, it turns out that uh, this, uh, this uh, zero dimension, this, uh, uh, this uh, local symmetry operator should have this combination. Either have triple X, or a single Z or double Z, but however, in the sub in the in the in the space where this uh, this Z Z tilde Z equal to one, the single Z tilde and the double Z is same is same thing is same thing. Okay, so you have two kind of a uh, uh, local operator like that. Okay, then similarly similarly uh, among those uh, among those uh, four string operator, uh, they, they no longer works. The bulk of those three operators works, but the boundary don't work very well. So you have to modify their boundary. And uh, so, so at the end, we find that uh, uh, 
uh, when, when, when you do this, we find there's a two, uh, uh, two string operator for y. One is a, uh, one is a called z string operator, called a z string operator, which is basically the product z tube. The product z tube, that's a string operator. But however, product z tube corresponds to just product of z i times z j, because z tube is same as a z z on neighbor. Then the product z tube on a uh, sequential link, then the overlapping side always cancel, then only two and survive. So then, so this uh, this uh, string operator with the empty block became string operator with empty block under this uh, projection, under under the one in subspace they are the same. Okay, so so originally we have two string operator, but uh, in the one in subspace they actually become the same operator. Then the other one is that uh, the other is supposed to be product X give us another patch operator, but that don't, don't work. We have to modify the boundary. We have to modify boundary by apply this. Uh, this is uh, operator on the boundary. So therefore make sure this operator again act within the lower next subspace and the commute with the, this operator. So that is a, uh, uh, so that is the idea, the emergence. Basically emergence means that uh, we still try to obtain transparent patch operator, but uh, we require that it uh, act within the lower next subspace. And because of that, the algebra changes. So this low energy transparent patch operator have a different algebra. It turns out that I don't know what I do. Yeah, it turns out that this uh, this algebra is the same as the one for the icing model. <laughs> you know, for the single icing model, we have two transparent patch, patch operators. Basically, it's a it's a Z I Z J and the product of X. And uh, uh, and uh, these two string operators have same algebra as a, of my icing model example. So we can do that calculation and say that. Uh, Actually, the break diffusion category coming from this low energy patch operator is a Z2 gate theory in the box. Yeah. Yes. Just to make sure. So, do you start with the model you have first chosen and the whole model to commute with the Hamilton family? Yeah. And is the difference with when you use the wedge, you mean that you still have the C2 on the whole Hamilton? Yes. And then the second part is only when you restrict the subspace. Yes. Subject. Yes. So, that, that's the reason you call it. You say it's different from. The symmetry is totally different. Yeah, so here I'm taking the point of view that the symmetry is given by this transparent patch operator. And uh, when you think about the whole model, we have this one set of a patch operator or transparent patch, patch operator. They have algebra. So actually, if you do this, the Bray diffusion category is a Z2 times Z2 gate theory. It's a, it's a, it's a, have two Z2 in one higher dimension. But when you restrict your low energy subspace, you have a different set of a a uh, patch operator. Then uh, the low energy patch operator gave rise to a different thing. I think this example is a very, very important in the following sense, because uh, this is a very general situation. Uh, we have uh, some Hamiltonian, and uh, then we only look at the low energy part of this Hamiltonian. Then it's possible this low energy part have emerging symmetry. But how do you recover, discover emerging symmetry of a low energy Hamiltonian? Then you'll say, well, I will introduce those transparent patch operator, which act within only map low energy state to low energy states with this constraint. And when you do that, then you may recover the low energy emerging symmetry. Yeah. Uh, one example, of, I don't know answer for example, but one example would be like a lambda level. You know, when you can all the lambda level together, you have a one, one situation. We will consider first lambda level only. When you restrict yourself, restrict yourself to first lambda level only, you have different situation. So the so all the symmetry should have a yeah. I can imagine all the symmetry will be different. Uh, even even so called U one symmetry can be different, and. Uh, you, you, you have really do this uh, string operator in the first lambda level and, and do all this. Yeah, I don't guarantee to be the different, but it could be different, but it's worthwhile to check. So anything you think is ordinary, when you restrict to first lambda level, maybe even extraordinary, <laughs> it's worthwhile to check what's what's going on there. Yeah, that, that's really the, the idea here. Yes. Yeah, that's right. 
uh, that's another thing that uh, this uh, uh, the Lorentz subspace is may, may, may not have a tensor product decomposition. Okay, and uh, so 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 therefore you can make it an anomalous uh, theory. So the, actually the the, the Lorentz effectively have anomalies. In, in, I actually have a gravitational anomaly. Okay. But 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 here I'm taking a point of view that the, the gravitational anomaly I think is captured by this Lorentz transparent particle operator. So I don't talk about it. Uh, I may be wrong, you know, and I'm not, not totally sure. I hope that's the case. If not, then you have to consider this uh transparent structure separately. Uh that's a that's a more trouble, more work. Yeah, and uh, so uh, uh, so this example, although it's a very like point model, but we need to re re uh, reflect, you know, the 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 emerging symmetry, how symmetry can emerge, how emerging symmetry can be so different than the original theory. But in this case, uh, certainly the uh, this two z two symmetry, even the, in the low energy subspace. We do have two these two these two Z2 symmetry still there in the low energy subspace. <laughs> you know, uh, it's still there. Um, but uh, but nature, but we can now say within low energy subspace we have a Z2 cross Z2. It's uh, yeah. I, I just don't know how to describe it. It's just a, a new situation. Yeah, we don't have a words for that. Okay, yeah, so this is a, a very good example. And uh, so, uh, so in the last few slides here, I just do some very general, uh, make some very general remark to see how how this way of looking at symmetry may may make it, uh, uh, may lead to some consequence. Okay. So, uh, uh, so here is really the uh, the point of view that uh, so in this figure, uh, we, the red line is our system. Okay, these are uh, dots, our so-called symmetry charge, our representation of symmetry, and they may feel so I J can feel so K. So this figure that described that uh, instead of using group to describe symmetry, instead of using transformation to describe symmetry, we're using conservation law. There's something point like extension. Uh, their, their, their dynamics are restricted. They have a conservation law. And the conservation law are described by this uh, a fusion. And also, they may have actual features. Maybe they may break self or the mutual statistics and things like that, the actual features. So, the conservation law plus actual feature gave rise to this uh, so called uh, 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 this, uh, this uh, R. This R actually is a uh, has, we call this fusion category, you know, all those uh, fusion plus actual feature is called a fusion category. So you can say fusion means a conservation law, category means this actual feature, like a self reading statistics. And uh, so the fusion category can be used this way. So R is this fusion category, which fully describe a symmetry. Okay. And then once you have this fusion category describe a symmetry, then we say that uh, this symmetry should have a dual symmetry. And when combines introduce them together, we should get a tabloid order in one, one higher dimension. And this tabloid order is called M. This M is a symmetry, dual symmetry, plus actual feature, the mathematically called the Brady diffusion category. Okay, so uh, roughly speaking, this, uh, this is R can be Z2 symmetry. And M can be Z2 gate theory, which means it contain both Z2 charge and Z2 flux. So things are double. Okay. Then there is a mathematical uh, uh, belief that is uh, the boundary, which is a fusion category on the boundary uniquely determine the bulk. Yeah. So, uh, so, this, so this is called the holographic, topological holographic principle. So the boundary uniquely determine the bulk. And, uh, and there's a mathematical symbol called the center. So center of a boundary gave rise to the center of a fusion category gave rise to a Brady fusion category. And uh, so the mathematics describe this relation uh, in this way. Yeah. 
And one may wonder why you call this a center from boundary to box one, why it's called center. You know, center of a group is based on part of a group which communes every other things. You know, this seems totally different. But uh, they are the same. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, so if you really, uh, for the defined center of a group in some categorical way, <laughs> you find that, yeah, it's a, it's a boundary to bulk map, something. So I don't understand that very well, but, uh, but I just uh, say I heard from my mathematician. They can understand the group, center of a group as a boundary bulk relation. So maybe the simplest boundary bulk relation. And this is a more general boundary bulk relation, and we, we see that more, okay. And certain mathematicians get this picture using different paths. I think since they have algebra, they have a group, their center group, then there's a category, they try to define the uh, center group in a categorical sense, they get uh, this, all the committing graph and the diagram, and all these things. And uh, then later we find in the study, in, this, in the physical studies, <laughs> We find all this uh, committing uh, diagram, this, uh, this, uh, this relation have to be boundary bulk relations. <laughs> so, so, so this is a, 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 a kind of interaction between physics and the mathematics. Physics, we see boundary bulk relation very naturally. And the mathematicians see some kind of a cent notion of center things. And, uh, and then amazingly, when you when you look at these two phenomena at the categorical level, you see, oh, they are the same thing. So the center is a box, is a center operation, is a boundary to box operation. So this is a, a quite uh, amazing. Okay. So uh, so basically, uh, uh, so this is a very general way uh, to understand this. But however, for this, uh, for this, uh, uh, but for, from this picture. We only have this issue that a boundary fusion category or boundary symmetry determine bulk topology order, not the other way. That means uh, we can have many different fusion category give rise to same bulk break fusion category. So the different fusion category can have the same center. Yeah. And uh, so, so that have a physical consequence. So what that means, that means uh, if we if you have R1, R2, we have yeah, we have R and R prime, they have a same center. What that means. So actually, this means that these two symmetry are equivalent. But uh, what do you mean by two symmetry are equivalent? They are different symmetry, different representation, different transformation, everything is different. What do you mean by they are equivalent? So the equivalent really means that it means following. Suppose we have one symmetry. Uh, described by by R, another symmetry described by R prime. Okay, but each symmetry does not mean one system. Each symmetry means a, a, a class of system. All have the same symmetry, so you have a two class of system. Then here we claim that uh, among these two class of symmetric system, there is a one to one correspondence, such that the corresponding corresponding system have same spectrum. Same energy spectrum, which is also not quite right. Actually, they, they, they don't have the same energy spectrum, but they have, have same spectrum in a symmetric subspace. This became very rigorous. Because for each system, for each symmetric system, you can define the symmetric subspace and energy spectrum in a symmetric subspace. Then for equivalent symmetry, then the corresponding system have identical spectrum in a symmetric subspace. So that is a so this is a very high level equivalence of a symmetry, but we should reflect in this a very abstract way. The the center of these two fusion category is the same, Brady, same Brady fusion category. And so it happens to have this have this kind of physical uh, meaning. Okay. And how another more physical meaning is falling. Uh, remember, uh, in our philosophy here, we say when you have a symmetry, we, 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 do, we do not allow to break it. That means even our instrument have the same symmetry. That means that we, all, we can only measure the correlation function of a symmetric operator. We cannot measure correlation function of a symmetric operator. So under this philosophy, then we say that uh, these two corresponding systems 
they also have a corresponding low corporate. The low corporate all have a correspondence, one to one correspondence. Then the correlation function for local symmetric operators are identical, even at the large scale. They are totally identical. So this is this is another way uh, to say uh, the e meaning of equivalent equivalence of a symmetry. Yeah. Uh, so this is this again. Uh, we have it's a very general way uh, to understand the symmetry. Okay. So this is kind of general statement. So now let's say making some uh, some uh, some give some example. Uh, example is really that this uh, like in n-dimensional space, the z n symmetry. Is equivalent to this uh, uh, n minus one form symmetry, which is the uh, we write as a z n minus one n. <laughs> so these two symmetry are equivalent. And uh, this is uh, just a generalization what we talk about the z two symmetry and the dual z two symmetry. They are actually two equivalent symmetry. And this reflects in the following: we have an icing model. I can do the uh, Kramer one layer duality get the dual icing model. The icing model dual icing model have identical spectrum within the symmetric subspace. Uh, that's indeed the truth. We can you can show that. So this is an example of that. And then certainly in two has dimension, we can have this z uh, three uh, times z two symmetry. They are due to this z uh, three times z uh, three one symmetry and z two. And this is trivial. We just uh, do one of these three. We don't do z two, so we, we just get this one. <laughs> okay. So this one gets a little bit non trivial because this. Uh, the S3 is like a semi dual product of Z3 and Z2. I hope this is in the right direction. I'm not so sure. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I think maybe okay. So the, so the dual is that of this, uh, again, we can just do this uh, Z3, only Z3 part. <laughs> so we have this funny situation. This, uh, this Z3 one form symmetry can have a semi dual product relation with Z2 zero form symmetry. So, so this, but actually, I, I give this example really try to say that the higher group, the higher form symmetry, or maybe they are, this may not be higher form symmetry, but the higher symmetry can have this uh, non trivial thing. This, uh, this uh, one symmetry and zero symmetry have non trivial coupling. So, this is an example of that when you do that. So, physically, it's really the following. Uh, so the charge object of uh, these three one symmetry are strings, okay. And uh, this is string are labeled by s and s bar. So these three, because you know s, s bar, and uh, g, because zero, one, two, one is a uh, two, one, two is a uh, charge conjugation. So two is s bar, one is s, okay. The non-trivial coupling is that this z to zero symmetry exchange s and s bar. So this a higher form symmetry and the zero symmetry have non trivial coupling. So 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 therefore this ordinary non abelian uh, uh, group symmetry became this a pretty non trivial higher group symmetry and they are they are uh, they are equivalent equivalent symmetries. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so maybe there's a yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. First we have arrow. There's, there's a there's a there's a hat in the LaTeX. And this this two has to be subscript, superscript. So basically, that's a ZNG theory is a is a oh maybe this one it's a two, sorry it's not I'm sorry it's two gauge theory. Uh, two gauge theory. Your gauge theory is a gauge theory means the gauge potential is a one one form live on the link. And uh, which is a one gauge theory, I think it's not the zero gauge theory somehow. And the two gauge theory is uh, the gauge potential live on a triangle. So it's a it's a two form. It's a gauge potential two form. It's a it's a it's a some uh, two form gauge theory. Yeah, I, I should I should not have a bracket. Yeah, this kind of confusing. But this is known that uh, this uh, uh, the ZN gauge theory and the ZN two gauge theory is the same topology order. Uh, they are different the TQFT, you know, different topological quantum field theory, but they describe the same topological order. Is this one in physics quantum? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, right. So, yeah. 
I think what I mean here, uh, this n dimension, I think I mean it's n minus two probably. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a bug here. This, but I think I mean maybe I mean n minus two. Yeah, or maybe n minus one. I, I will check. Yeah, there's uh, some probably n minus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe only in three plus one, this is true, but n to three, this is true. So n to three, if this is true, that's uh, n minus one, actually. This, this is supposed to be n minus one, yeah. yeah. And the last non-trivial example, I, I want to say, I want to give is that uh, uh, in one dimension, we have Z2, Z2 symmetry, which can have a mixed anomaly or anomaly. And actually the anomaly are lab labeled by three index, the both three index Z2, Index. So we use this uh, zero one zero means we have mixed up middle one is a mixed normally. So zero one one means uh, we have mixed normally from middle one, but the second Z two have a self normally. <laughs> in the, in uh, in one dimension Z two symmetry can have a self normally. And in this case is that the first Z two have a self normally, and the two Z two have a mixed normally, and the second Z two have no anomaly. So just this index to label what kind of anomaly you may have. Then the claim is that uh, these three anomalous uh, Z2 symmetry is equivalent. And this is easy to understand because uh, Z2 cross Z2 depends on which direction you can call combination of two Z2 as a third, as a, as a one Z2. So there's a choice of basis. I think this relation can be understood from the choice of basis of uh, what is first Z2 or the second Z2. But a little non-trivial thing is that the Z4 actually is same equivalent to this. The Z4 symmetry is equivalent to the Z2 cross Z2 symmetry with a mixed anomaly in one dimension. A simple way to understand this uh, is the following. You know, uh, this, those are abelian uh, group. So therefore the categorical symmetry is a, is an abelian topology order. And uh, we can use in this uh, K matrix the transformation theory of a uh, 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 abelian transformation theory to describe this all the abelian topology order. Okay, it turns out that uh, this uh, uh, the Z4 symmetry for Z4 symmetry uh, they have a they have bulk. The topology order this categorical symmetry or topology order in the bulk is given by this kind of K matrix zero four four zero two by two K matrix. Okay, and for the Z2 cross Z2, well we have a two by two matrix zero two two zero that's the first Z2. 0, 2, 2, 0, that's the second Z2. Just put them together, we get Z2 cross Z2. Okay. Then what is the mixed anomaly? The mixed anomaly is, uh, means, uh, yeah, we have something on this block. <laughs> the topology that has something on this block. Yeah, this part is, uh, needs some other thing uh, to, to derive, but let's take this. So the minus one, I have one also work, I think. Uh, minus one, one on this uh, block. So that's a Z2 cross Z2. With the mixed anomaly. So this is a categorical symmetry for Z2 cross Z2 with mixed anomaly. This is a categorical symmetry for Z4. Okay. And the K matrix are very different. So it looks like a different topology order. It's different transformation theory, different topology order. And uh, but actually in the transformation theory, we can we have a in this case we have four gauge field, A1, A2, A3, A4. We can do the field redefinition. And the field redefinition is given by this integer matrix, which are, have an invertible integer matrix. You know, so why we want to integer matrix? Because uh, the charge in each gauge field is defined to be integers. And we do not want to change this quantization condition with charge. This is a quantization is very important. So we can only use an integer matrix to define the, uh, to define the field redefinition, which map integer charge to integer charge. So that's integer matrix and they are invertible. And uh, so, so this is the invertible uh, integer matrix, which do the field redefinition. Map A1, A2, A3, A4 to A1 prime, A2 prime, A3 prime, A4 prime. Then using prime field, the K matrix gets changed to, to this form. It's still different from a Z4 theory because Z4, KZ4 is this corner. It have another part like this, but this part, this transformation theory is a trivial. Uh, this transformation theory describes a trivial product states. 
yeah, this particular one, you can say this k measure of determined equal to one, or determine minus one, and uh, but uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, yeah, this 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 is a product state, so uh, no topology over here. So therefore, this four by four k matrix is equivalent to the two by two k matrix of given by this corner. So this is kind of a very quick way to show this. Uh, these two symmetry is the same. So this example demonstrates the power of this kind of thinking, because this statement is about the lattice model. We have two lattice models with different symmetry, different symmetry transformation. But our argument is topological field theory, transformer theory. So but once you see those connections, you can use in this topological field theory point of view to see the lattice uh, connection. Okay, for the, for the same token, we can see a lot of symmetries. Okay, uh, so the also all, all the all, all these are equivalent symmetries. You know, I just uh, uh, so all these <laughs> you, you, can, you can do the computer, they're all kind of symmetry, they're all equivalent. Yeah, the interesting thing is the following. Uh, uh, let me see which one. Uh, um, Yeah, this one, yeah, uh, this, this, this result is interesting. And also this result. Okay. Uh, okay, so, so this result means that we have a three Z2 with some kind of anomaly. Unfortunately, the program I used to do this calculation did not specify the basis. I don't know which is normally. <laughs> Just say this is normally laid by this, but I don't know which one is mixed, which one is not mixed. But anyway, there's some anomaly. And this uh, 3Z2 abelian symmetry with anomaly would correspond to this, uh, 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 I think this is a dihedral group, yeah, who is of eight elements, this non abelian group. Then similarly, uh, 3Z2 with a different anomaly, you can see this anomaly is slightly different. Can, can be became equivalent to quaternion group, non abelian group, quaternion group. Yeah. So, so therefore, this uh, non abelian group can be realized by abelian group with a uh, proper anomalies, and they are equivalent. So, those kind of things uh, can happen. And uh, yeah, the last one, I just want to say the following that's a, uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, topological holographic principle is very much like uh, ADF CFT, this uh, holographic duality. Okay. And in holographic duality, people say the boundary determines the bulk. This is that's holographic principle, boundary determine bulk. Okay. But actually, the holographic duality is a duality, it's not the boundary determine bulk. Because uh, when we say boundary determine bulk, we have implicit assumption bulk always determine boundary. <laughs> So the, the full statement is a boundary equal to bulk. So, so AD, the conformal field theory boundary and this ADS anti theory bulk states, they carry the same information, they are the same thing. Physically, this is a very, uh, it's very reasonable in the following sense. You know, when you look at the conformal field theory of uh, any quantum field theory, we may look at the, from RG sense, at different energy scale, we have different physics. How energy you have one physics, mean to medium energy have another physics, low energy have another physics. So we have this energy parameter gave rise to the sequence of a theory, which describes different physics. Then in this ADS uh, holograph, the ADS CFT duality, this uh, energy scale was a math into a, a coordinate in the, in the actual dimension. <laughs> And then, so, so therefore, in the actual dimension, uh, the far away from the surface is uh, infrared, and closer to the boundary, you get a more and more ultraviolet. And so, so therefore, this actual dimension, one higher dimension basis energy scale. Yeah. And from this point of view, that uh, the, 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 our original theory and the, the box theory is the same thing. The box theory just the parameters and the scale differently. Okay. But however, the, uh, However, in the, uh, here uh, we talk about something a little different. This topological holographic principle means that uh, the boundary, boundary quantum field theory determines topological bulk, but not the other way. 
uh, the same box have many many boundary, but the boundary always give rise to a unique box. So this is a different from this uh, ADF CFT, but also very closely related. So I, I raise this really because uh, I really wish we can bring the two together so the uh, to see this uh, become the same thing. And uh, uh, but at the moment uh, still different. I hope one day this we say these two are really very similar same thing. But in this uh, this boundary determined block statement, uh, there's uh, something concrete thing we should need to do. How do you prove this? You know, it's just some picture, some slogan, you know. But what we presented uh, in last two lecture actually can be viewed as a way to derive this relation by in reinterpreting say, say quantum field theory is an algebra of local operators. We, we try to really find what is common filter. It's just we have a local operator, they have Hamiltonian, the algebra, you know, this kind of thing is a, my quantum field theory. So here, the quantum field theory just refers to conformities. No, uh, no, can't have energy gap. So in the ADS CFT, the CFT really conformal theory means a gapless. Here, quantum field theory means uh, it, uh, it may have a small energy gap. The energy gap much sm much smaller than the in the cutoff. So quantum field theory really means the falling, means the, a theory we don't know the cutoff. The cutoff is unspecified. So we determine a theory from their low energy property. But, it's, uh, but uh, we don't know their cutoff. I see. But we, it's always a uh, renormalizable theory. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this became more, more deadly question. Should we, yeah, what, what, what the renormalizable means? Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I should think. I haven't thought of this direction. I think really normalizable means uh, whether it's yeah, a it's kind of for simplest definition, it's kind of independent. Yeah. So so in the high high end field, it's it's high uh, kind of independent that they refer to conformal field theory because and then yeah, yeah, yeah. conformal symmetry then is kind of independent. Here we don't emphasize some cut of independent. Uh yeah, but this is a more delicate question, you know. I, I don't know whether which position I should choose and uh uh but in some sense, the cut of independence, uh, yeah, maybe that's a good thing. But anyway, let's, let's don't go in that direction. So but what I really try to say is that uh, the, the quantum field theory really means that uh, we, know, we know the low energy properties. So that means that we know the low energy local operator and the low energy transparent patch operator. So everything is all low energy phenomenological. And then from this algebra of transparent patch operator, determine the bulk topology order. So this calculation essentially is deriving the bulk topology order, deriving the uh, holographic principle. So you can, you can view this, uh, this algebraic approach as a deriving uh, holographic principle. But this one is, is not, it's not holographic duality. The ADF CFT is a holographic duality. We don't have that. We only derive this uh, holographic principle in the sense of just one way, yeah. So, uh, uh, so, so this is a uh, uh, this is a picture. But on the other hand, remember at the beginning, I say I have a wish. I wish the symmetry determined the gapless space. So that wish really is a, is a this one. <laughs> the boundary and the bulk are the equal. So, so somehow if you so somehow uh, if you understand this uh, more generally and uh, not in this sense has some in some expanded sense, maybe bulk and the boundary determine each other. So this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, 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 the desire that using symmetry to to study gapless states. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I kind of uh, five minutes over over time, and I will, I will stop here. So any questions? Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I have a question about this. Uh, um, Boundary determined by the block because uh, yeah actually there are many examples if you uh, have the same block but uh, on the boundary maybe you slightly modify some yeah. boundary Hamiltonian and then uh, many properties like if like if you have compared by both on theory this radius can change yeah exactly so, so only certain properties are universal and uh, yeah some generic property is non universal that's right and uh, so uh, uh, yeah. Maybe I will touch that in my last lecture. Yeah, so there's two more lectures. So this is a, a, a so my next lecture, I will uh, 
talk about the more physical thing, like uh, how to apply this picture to study the phase transition and the critical critical point. Maybe last lecture also maybe mentioned this bit, bit, bit. Because when boundaries modified, we try to interpret the following. The emerging symmetry may change. So when you fix your bulk, modify boundary, that means that I only look at the sum of the emerging symmetry of the boundary. And this, this part of the emergence of is not changed. But, the, but when you change the boundary, there may be actual emerging symmetry. So when you include all the emerging symmetry, then you may have a chance of boundary bulk determine each other. Yeah, but, uh, but, you, but, but usually, when we, usually the point is that usually when we have this uh, given symmetry, it has a lot of many different uh, uh, critical states. But, uh, but I try to say there's many different critical states may have an additional emerging symmetry, and that may, may give us a chance to, to see this one-to-one. -one. Yeah, if you have a finite possibility, that, that may be possible. Yeah. But uh, uh, I mean, for compared by boson theory, this reduce can change yeah. continuously. Yeah. So you have maybe infinite number of possibilities if you yeah. uh, just change in this yeah. boundary. So, the, 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 so actually, the, the answer is the following. For any rational number radius, rational radius, there is an additional discrete symmetry. So therefore, all the rational radius <laughs> uh, probably can be understood this way. Irrational radius is an additional thing, but the rational radius is dense enough. So <laughs> yeah, but, but and, yeah, you, you're totally right. For continuous symmetry, there's an actual shuttle here, and uh, uh, we don't know. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the point I'm trying to say is following. So here, I'm kind of in the mode that is a, uh, I try to be optimistic, not self-criticizing. <laughs> so try to see the most optimistic of, of time. So basically try to do this. Uh, if something works for discrete symmetry, we say, say it may be GMO, this may be, may be, may be not general. For, for continuous symmetry, indeed, one need the actual, actual features to input. Yeah. yeah, but, but even it's a discrete symmetry at a UV scale, like in the box or in some UV model, but the low energy effective series still can be, uh, have this emergent continuous symmetry. Yeah, when you have emergent continuous symmetry, there's a more, more trouble. If you, if you don't have emergent discrete symmetry, there may be, that's, that's a better chance for this to work. When you have emergent continuous symmetry, yeah, there's a more trouble. But, but I try to but say, but in the general order with like a ten charge is equal to one, then typically yeah, emerging that, that's right. Yeah. So the yeah, that's a, so one need additional feature. Uh, yeah. But at, at the moment, I do I do not I do not want to use that that knowledge to dismiss this way of thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. See you next week then.